In this video we are going to continue looking at edit sub D but this time concentrate on the toolbox. So I will make my basic sub D again. Uh, again give it some symmetry. Now I'll go to edit sub D. And if the toolbox doesn't show by default just come down to the diner bar and click on the toolbox and then it pops up. Now this is broken, you can see the toolbox is broken into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven main areas. Display division levels, utilities, crease sharp, grow shrink, inset offset and symmetry control. So let's just go through each of these um, sections in order. First we have display and this is just really controlling how different aspects of the sub D in the cage are being displayed. So first we have show the subdivided surface and if we hide that we just see the control box. The next one is the control points they're on by default, but if we hide that, you see the points disappear and appear. This can be very useful when you have a very, very complex and busy sub D. You can turn these on and off. The next one is the cage edges and the cage faces. A very subtle difference there, but it shows and hides the cage faces. Um, the fifth option is show symmetry, so it can hide or show the symmetry plane. And then the sixth one is hiding the back facing cage. So if I switch that off, you can see I can actually see the back of the cage through the sub D. And again, if, if your sub D gets very, very complex, sometimes then you don't want to see all this back information. So if you switch the hide back on, then you see that all that back information has been hidden. So that's display. The next main section is the division levels. And like we talked about in the very, very first uh, primer introduction to sub D, this is controlling the surface division and the cage division. The surface division is the actual display of the sub D itself. And if I went to the two, for example, and if I go to uh, showing a flat shaded sub D instead of a smooth shaded sub D, you see the actual facets. And then as I go down each level in the surface division, you see the object getting smoother and smoother and smoother. Let's take that back to the, uh, the fifth level for example. And then the next control is the cage control. Right now we're seeing six faces. Let's divide that down and you see we go to 24 faces, 96 faces, 384 faces or 1500 faces. And this just gives you more control so I can come in here, pick individual points for example, pull those individual points around, get a little bit more control, pop back to the top cage level, you see it keeps that little change I've made and the change is very faceted because of my surface division level so let's make that a lot finer and you get a better idea of the actual change that I've actually made. And the nice thing with the cage level is that even though I've gone back up to the top, I can pick a face, modify that cage at the very, very uh, simplified level, or I can go back down to the very complex level, and you see we still have those changes in there as well. So I'm going to go back up to the simplified level, go back to a simpler display, undo some of those changes. So that was the division level section. Now let's go down to the utilities section. First, I'm going to click on a face. And now what I can do here is actually delete and make a hole. That's the first little command we have here. And because we have symmetry on, it's done it on both sides. And it's actually deleted that face on both sides and created a hole and therefore it looks like it's created a cylinder. Let's undo that. Now the next command in is the delete and collapse. This doesn't really do anything on such a simplified model so I'm going to add uh, a couple of sections here and now when I come in and delete this face you'll, you'll get a better idea of what's happening. So now when I hit delete and collapse you see it's deleted that entire face and collapsed the, uh, the control faces to a single point. Let's undo that. Now if I did that with a really simplified model, so select the face and then hit delete, 
you'll see the entire model goes away because it's actually deleting all of these four points here and because symmetry is on it deletes the other four points and then you, you end up with nothing in the middle and so the whole model just disappears. Now I'm going to come to the third option, delete and fill whole, but again before I explain that I'm just going to add a couple of loops. Now if I was to come in and hit this face and hit delete and fill hole, you see what it's actually doing is going through and making a hole all the way so through to the other side. Now these next options are uh, ways of um, modifying these points. So let's add uh, a couple more loops here to get some more points. And now I'm going to pull some of these points around. So you can see that these no longer follow a straight line. But if I grab these points, and you can either uh, pick them one at a time, or if you come to the side here and do a window select, you can grab them all at the same time. Then when I hit linear, it makes them all go into a straight line. Let's undo that. Or I could hit planar, and it brings them to live on the same plane. Let's show you that again. That was a very subtle change. You see they're actually just off the plane slightly, but if I hit planar, it makes them all live on the same plane. Or I can actually come and smooth those points. So if I pull a couple of these around again, just introduce a kink in there. Now I'll come back, select these points, and then this time uh, we'll use the sixth option along, smooth points, and when I hit it you see it just smooths out the distribution of those points and we have a much smoother underlying sub-D form. Now let's uh, undo some of this. The next option along is adding a face loop. So I can select this face and when I hit add face loop, you see what it's done is just come in and added uh, just an inset loop, a very subtle inset loop. And that allows me just a little bit more control and if I was to do that again, And now pick that face. You can see I can start to get this sort of effect. The next option along is reverse sub D. So I can hit this and it just reverses everything. And if we had something, some data on the inside, this would be uh, showing the data that's on the inside. Or I can set the sub D surface color, so we could change this to, uh, let's say, a, a, a blue sort of color. And then the last one is see-through. So let's undo the color change. And then if we put on see-through, it just puts it into a see-through uh, dynamic mode. So that was finishing looking at the utilities in the in the utilities section. So now we're going to take a look at the next level down, the crease sharp section. If I select an edge, then I can take this slider, and as I slide up and down the crease slider, let's go to a different angle, you see the corresponding edge to that uh, cage edge, the corresponding edge on the sub D model to the cage edge sharpens up for me, creases up. Now sharpening as opposed to creasing will really take that edge all the way to the cage edge. And I can also do that with points. So with a point I can sharpen it right to the point and I can grab the edge, 
crease up the edge and there you see we've created uh, a very sharp point with a very sharp edge that just fades out into the neighboring surface and if we make the surface a little bit smoother that will give you a better idea of the, the sort of effect we've very quickly generated right there. Now the next section down is growing and shrinking. Uh, before I do that I'm just going to add in uh, I'm just going to extrude the face off and I'm going to extrude it at uh, let's say 75 okay because now with uh, grow and shrink now I have this this one face selected if I was to shrink that you see it gets smaller and it's getting smaller relative to the scale each time it's 5% or I can grow it at the same time or, or I can grow it the other way and then if we change the scale, let's make it 25% uh, and do a shrink. You see it's just a much faster change. Or do the expand again. And then offset inset. You see it's actually moving the face out each time when I go offset or inset. And it's moving it the 2 millimeters that we specify here each time. Let's undo some of these, go back to the, the simplified model. To finish looking at the toolbox, we're going to look at the last section, the symmetry section. Now what you see on the screen at the moment is the, the very simple basic sub DQ uh, with no symmetry built into there. To add symmetry, I'm going to click these points and go add planar. And then that adds a planar degree of symmetry for me. So if I now start moving these points around, you can see that we've added symmetry into this model. Now something else we can do is add multiple planes of symmetry. So if I extrude this out, and let's take this down, and then extrude it again. What I can do on these, this last piece that I've added is select these points, come to select, grab these points, and hit add planar. And now we have another plane of symmetry built into this model. So if I now start pulling some points around, for example this, this edge, we have symmetry, we have symmetry, Now when I pull this one around, you can see that we have symmetry built around this plane. But only locally, we don't have it built globally. Now if I undo some of this, and then take that second symmetry and move it up in the order. So now in the order, this symmetry plane supersedes the middle symmetry plane. And if I do some changes again, you'll see in the middle it behaves as normal as we would expect but now if I go out to this end piece and pull this around you can see the other side is behaving symmetrically at the same time so we've built in two degrees of symmetry into this one model and you can continue to add more and more symmetry down there as well now if you wanted to delete the symmetry or turn it off I could easily come and switch it off And then when I come in and do a change, the global symmetry, the middle symmetry, takes over again. So we're seeing a change to the other side of the model. But we're not seeing a local sym symmetry happen because we turned that plane off. Or I can grab that and delete it completely. So that completes a really quick look at the toolbox. And then in the previous video, the rest of the Dynabar options. So the next video is going to actually start to put all this together and come up with an actual workflow.